Hello, everybody. Welcome. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another special webinar with Yes Education. My name is Bo O'Brien. I hope everyone is doing today. Good to see everyone joining in. Welcome to all of our partners from across, across Asia. Good to see people coming in from Vietnam, China, Malaysia, Indonesia, India. Very good to see. Welcome everyone today. Okay, so today we have a very special webinar uh, with the University of Southampton. Um, some of you uh, may be familiar with the University of Southampton. It's a research-led uh, university, originally from the UK, of course, and has uh, a global reputation for academic uh, excellence and a research-led uh, university. Uh, they are actually one of the largest engineering uh, faculties uh, in the UK and are regarded as one of the top five universities for engineering uh, in the UK. And is also inside the top 100 uh, universities in the globe, very highly ranked, ranked number 90 uh, in the QS World Rankings um, in 2021. So very highly ranked. Uh, their campus in Malaysia has very excellent uh, facilities uh, designed for excellent and effective learning uh, with full access to learning resources um, at the, the University of Southampton in the UK um, as, as well. So a lot of students uh, can study uh, in Malaysia first and then head over to the UK uh, after the first year in Malaysia uh, as well, which we'll talk more about uh, in the presentation uh, as, as well. So today we have uh, Umar Razak, uh, who is uh, the staff member at uh, University of Southampton uh, in Malaysia to give us uh, the presentation today. So thank you for joining us, Umar. How are you doing? Pleasure, bro. Thank you so much. Hi, everyone. Um, pleasure. Yeah, doing well. Uh, I'm sure everybody is aware of what's happening in Malaysia and the region, you know. So, but yeah, things are good. And I hope it's the same at everybody's end as well. Great. Fantastic. So today, uh, our webinar will uh, be the normal format. Uh, so we will have uh, the presentation uh, conducted by Umar. And if you have any questions, um, please uh, may, make use of this time and put any questions that you, you may have about uh, University of Southampton in the chat box. Um, yeah, any, anything at all, uh, don't be shy. Um, could be anything uh, about study in Malaysia or about the university of, of itself or about the, the application process. Um, please don't hesitate to ask uh, in, the, in the chat box below. Um, and then, yeah, we'll, we'll uh, ask any questions in, uh, in the chat box and then we'll get to them at the end of the presentation. So I hope to go for about a one hour session um, and, then, and then we'll conclude there. So I'll pass it on to you now, Umar, and you should, should be able to share your screen. All right, thank you for that, uh, Bogen. So can everybody see my screen now? Yes. Perfect, all right, okay. So now this is official. Thank you so much, Bo, Yes Education, Johnny, Wayne, and the other team members, you know, for arranging this. Always a pleasure to, I mean, meet uh, representatives, partners from uh, different parts of the world. And uh, obviously the input, the, the, the guidance that we receive, you know, is huge, huge, and it's very important. So thank you for arranging this. And I'll try to keep it brief so we have more time for some questions and answers. You know, those are always helpful. Um, again, uh, Bo will be monitoring the chat. So if anything comes to your mind and uh, for, for a point that I'm um, covering, you're most welcome to put it in a chat box so you don't miss it. And then either during the presentation or at the end, then we can have that addressed. So with that, I'll move to um, explain what is Southampton Malaysia about, you know, obviously Southampton UK, uh, as Bo mentioned, top 90 in the world, you know, about 160 years of history, you know, and uh, quite, quite a lot of achievements, things are happening there all the time, research focus in the environment. But um, Southampton, Malaysia, you know, particularly has, I would say, I always say that it has some additional advantages, you know, being part of such a global network, but being in Malaysia, we have something more to offer. And I'll try to cover that in the coming slides so you can understand that how it can add value to your uh, counseling and support to us, you know, so with that. 
away we go. So uh, I'll send this uh, this slide these slides at the end of uh, the presentation to Bo and the team so it can be distributed to you all. It's sort of a training manual as well with some hyperlinks and some other additional um, uh, access to some other resources where the partners like yourself can um, uh, can can access later on. You know for some updates, some new brochures, fee structures, and so on. So do have a look at this uh, manual once I share with you later on as well. You'll see it someplace it has this uh, web uh, link sort of uh, icon. So that's a hyperlink which takes you to some additional uh, database or resources, you know, for designs, promotional material, and so on. And then it also gives you access to the agent information pack, which is which is which, is, which I mentioned is uh, regularly updated. Um, quick. Uh, uh, a note, a welcome, first of all, official and a look at our new campus that's coming up in um, 2021 July in a couple of months time now. And uh, I'll be covering that in detail, but just wanted to let you have a quick glance at what's happening, you know, as far as the new campus is concerned. Hi, Yimi. Welcome. Yep, so that's a quick that's a quick glance of our the new campus. Uh, I'll let you know the location in a while. You know, it's uh, right now we are in Edu City, which is a government initiative in Johor Bahru State. And then where we are moving, I'll let you know. First introduction to the team. So the team is headed by John, uh, with coming with a, a, a number of years. You know, I would say a couple of decades experience uh, through Southampton, uh, UK. And then we have um, uh, myself. I mean, I'm the students recruitment manager. Um, we have. Uh, Q, uh, can we Q as the marketing manager? We also have uh, um, uh, Sita, who's this uh, admission officer. We have uh, Anston, Raymond, Peter, Nabil, Jashwin as my team members, you know, for recruitment and they are managing different markets. And then we have the uh, as Wani as administrative support. It's good to have a look at this, you know, just because uh, some of you from different regions, later on when Bo will introduce you uh, to the respective PIC, it's good to know that who's handling your market and then what sort of support to get from which individual. So this is a, we have, we have got limited focus in international markets, but I understand from Theo, uh, from Bo and Wayne's discussions that yes, we are covering most of those which where yes, education is located. So I think we can, we are able to support every one of you, you know, one way or the other uh, for, for market development for uh, Southampton in those regions. Um, next we have, um, quick glance at uh, our USPs. So you're looking at uh, top 90 in the world, as Bo mentioned earlier. You know, it's uh, last year we were top 97th, but now we move improved to seven positions uh, in top 100, 150, 200. Every position matters a lot and it's quite significant, you know, even a single movement. So we moved <clears throat> about seven um, from last year. 91st, 5% of the graduates, you know, are employed in the professional or managerial roles. 
the other i mean i would say they are from non uh, i mean uh, studies related programs or family businesses or future studies but i mean if you talk to the academics in fact you know, they always boast that is 100% um, employability your statistics are incomplete you know because i know my students all of them are working so we go by what is submitted to us you know through surveys and all so we see a 95% of them working in professional and managerial roles you know within a couple of years of graduation a uh, flexible transfer option now this is something that's unique to southampton malaysia campus obviously and i will be spending some time i'm like you know uh, to explain it to all of you because it's it's a huge huge significant uh, usp it just broadens the the spectrum you know of the target market for us in any region in the world you know for southampton malaysia particularly so that's i'm going to talk about in a couple of slides uh, next one then programs are individually ranked so if you're looking at electrical and electronics engineering, for example, that we have in Malaysian campus is number one by Times ranking and a couple of other rankings in UK and so on. Uh, mechanical engineering, for example, is top number four. Business programs are under 10 and so on. So the programs that we have in Malaysian campus, those have been carefully selected that they are also individually ranked other than the university's ranking gets a huge support and boost for from employers uh, global networking and best of both worlds experience and now this is again a usb that is more uh, related or uh, uh, particular to malaysian campus you know southampton because you get to experience best of both worlds europe you know so uh, to say and southeast asia through malaysia and that adds to your experience exposure employers uh, i mean like you know preferences and all this again some of the information in coming slides on that 40 to 70 percent more economical than uk again a, a usp which is specifically related to malaysian campus so if you're looking at the if you look at the fee structures in again coming slides program slides right you'll notice that the students have the option to have the same degree same qualification, you know, but at 40 to 70 percent lesser cost, you know, again, like I said, it broadens the horizon of the or the spectrum of the target market that you can look for Malaysian campus and not only UK campus. Right. And then at 90 percent of the graduates are employed within the first three months of graduation, six months of graduation. So that's, again, something that we like to mention and highlight. And that includes, obviously, students from Malaysian campus as well. You know, so moving on. Right now, we are located in Johor Bahru, which is the southernmost tip of uh, Malaysia. You know, I'm sure uh, Malaysian map is uh, quite known to all of you. But we are in the southern tip, you know, not in Kuala Lumpur. We are about three and a half hours drive from Kuala Lumpur. And we are about 15 minutes from Singapore. So uh, the, the link bridge between Malaysia and Singapore is about uh, 12 minutes drive, you know, from my office to, to that bridge. And then another 25 to 30 minutes, you are in the Singapore city center. So by that uh, location, you know, we are actually more closer to Singapore than we are even to Johor Bahru city, which is the capital of this state, right? And a lot of students, they uh, prefer or they tend to go to uh, Singapore, for example, like internships or any industrial engagements and so on. You know, the border crossing is quite convenient, quite easy. Uh, not for the groceries, but yeah, why not? Even Saturday drive, Sunday evening or something like this, they can go to Singapore and then be back. And that obviously adds, um, it opens them up, you know, to a different sort of employer or industrial exposure when they are, you know, so close to Singapore. So that's where we are located. Now, in terms of, our uh, exact location in Johor Bahru, we are in Edu City. So Edu City was Malaysian government's initiative to attract some international uh, 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 education partners. You know, a lot of them are still going to uh, KL. Kuala Lumpur was a is a is sort of a, a capital for education as well. You know, across Malaysia, but the Johor government wanted to promote it as education hub as well. So one of the destinations, you know, for education. So they have this Edu City where we have about eight. Um, nine nine international institutions you know in the uh, in that premises so we have newcastle from uk we have um, reading university from uk we have southampton from uk we have netherlands maritime institute we have um, raffles and the Med mdis from singapore and so on so again the, the benefit is that uh, if you can you can be at any top university 
but as a student you know you're all or even as an academic you're always comparing yourself or you only only have your own self you know to know but when you are in that sort of premises where the accommodation facilities sports grounds and other activities are all combined or mutual you're always able to interact with the student from other top names you know or academics from other top names and that gives you just additional insight you know in what's really happening out there in the industry or what's happening in the other students lives you know so that's another benefit of uh, edu city now with the new New campus we are just stepping out of edu city it's about 200 meters away uh, from the from the border of edu city because uh, all this while we had only engineering programs in malaysian campus so we had one foundation in engineering and we had three uh, undergraduate programs in engineering those led to about 25 specializations in uk but though, though that's all what we had but then um, beginning of this year we've launched um, six new business programs one computer science undergraduate program supported by two foundations one in business and one in computer science we are adding another six new programs in 2022 along with five postgraduate additional postgraduate programs in 2022 so from moving from one plus three sort of programs to about 25 plus programs in a span of one and a half years we needed a much bigger campus and that's why we have stepped out of edu city to have that because the current facilities the current uh, uh, infrastructure within edu city did not permit that so we will be there but general location will remain the same <clears throat> so that's johor baru and edu city a lot of focus you know a lot because it's uh, just close to the city so amenities and facilities are all there but it's just slightly away so you're not distracted by a lot of things which for example happens in kuala lumpur or cyber jaya or even penang so students have a lot more focus you know when they're in this <clears throat> excuse me area and i would say slightly <clears throat> excuse me slightly i would say more economical as well compared to living and other expenses in Kuala Lumpur. So that's where we are in terms of geographical location. Just to give you a, a, a look at what's happening around us. So if you can see the cursor, these two towers are the accommodation option called Econest. And then in the neighborhood of the campus, it's all happening in the surrounding. You've got about 80 plus cafes and restaurants. All different types of cuisines are there from fast foods to local uh, stalls and everything. So again, economical. And then other amenities are just walking distance from the campus and accommodation. Uh, these are the six campuses. Obviously, I'm sure most of you are working with uh, our UK, uh, I mean, Southampton as well. But these are the six campuses that we have in UK. And it's good to know general location or general uh, details about those because of the flexible transfer options. So we have the Highfield is the main campus um, uh, where we have the administration some, uh, and, and, and some other faculties. Southampton General Hospital for Medical and Health Sciences, Waterfront Campus for Oceanographic and other related naval engineering programs and so on. Avenue campus, Winchester campus, and Boulderwood campuses are for engineering, business, and social sciences. So those are our campuses in the uh, UK. Now, um, talking about the USPs and academic strength, so I would always like to start the program introduction, you know, uh, through academics information to get some confidence, to get some idea of what is the, the proficiency level when you talk about the programs at Southampton. So, First of all, we have this PAT, Personal Academic Tutor Mechanism on the campus. You know, so every semester, a student is allocated a PAT. You know, so if let's say he or she has four or five modules, this personal academic tutor is responsible for, um, uh, for high understanding, I would say, other than the classroom's engagement with the actual academics, you know, this PAT is responsible to support you, to guide you, to mentor you, or to tutor you to get better grades in those subjects. So it could... It could be a different perspective for this for something that you're studying from another uh, academic it could be a group assignment issue that you are facing and you're struggling with so that pad comes in so every week for example they have access to this pad for assistance on the other four modules that they are taking and it is one of the most appreciated thing you know by students and uh, parents right so that's what we have now in terms of the quality of the academics <clears throat> we have a very low student to staff ratio all this while we have not gotten like 20 40 50 students in the classroom we maintain a small cohort and that's a reason as well that usually in an academic year uh, for undergraduate programs because we have only one intake in um, september right so usually that intake is quite close to packed you know by june or july latest by july we are sort of like you know on the maximum quota for that 
because students go by uh, you know, what do you call forecast results, predicted grades, school grades, AS results, and so on. They book their seats, and when we are maintaining a small size class sizes, so it's good to I mean you know for them to register earlier than later and then missing out on the classes. So low start to student ratio obviously offers a more engagement, understanding of what's happening, right? You know more interaction. 100% of the academics on campus, they are PhD qualified. They're not pursuing PhDs. They're not masters and or anything at all. They are PhD qualified. So now couple that with the low staff ratio plus your, I mean, the PhD qualified academics. So that the, the sense of the level of engagement, interaction, you know, the industrial input that these academics can provide is really impressive. On top of that, something that I always add that we don't have a single um, a part-time academic on campus. All are fully 100% employed Southampton uh, staff. So meaning that they are not available to you for a couple of hours in a day and they're rushing you know, for some other lectures or anything at all. They are on the campus available to you morning till evening you know, for constant engagement. So the focus again is there. Another thing which is hugely impressive you know, when it comes to academic proficiency is one lecturer for one subject. I know, I mean, some other decent institutions do that as well, but most, I would say 95, 97% of the institutions, you have one academic, you know, maybe teaching two or three subjects at times. So I'm probably, let's say I'm, I'm, I'm a marketing um, uh, lecturer, but I'm also preparing the slides, you know, in the, in the same evening for the tomorrow's lecture, I'm preparing some slides for a communication subject that I'm teaching, or I'm preparing it for a, a business law that I'm teaching, you know, tomorrow. So I'm always, I'm like, you know, occupied with other researches and projects and assignments as well you know because i'm teaching multiple subjects but at southampton one academic one subject so all my focus all my concentration and now couple that with my phd i'm like you in that my focus is in there so what i'm delivering in the classroom the next day is 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 huge you know is is very relevant and focused right so um now uh, so that's that's what's happening in terms of uh, <clears throat> um, uh, academic qualification and yes they are international they're coming from different parts of the world as well you know some of them are malaysians you know with international experience been teaching in australia uk singapore and so on and then they came back after hearing about our campus or they, they join us you know in between and then we've got some from uh, international markets as well uh, chris has asked where is the uh, campus located in malaysia so chris i hope that was covered you know it's in uh, johor baru at edu city it's iskandar putri the location so we are in Iskandar Putri within Edu City premises, you know. So I'll move on to the uh, presentation. Um, next, yes. So we have um, um, business uh, engineering foundation, as I mentioned, and now we have added computer science foundation as well to the program, uh, to the portfolio. For foundations, we have three intakes, April, July, and September. So we are still gearing up for our April, uh, J July intake. April intake just concluded, you know, I mean, um, uh, went well, I would say quite well uh, considering the circumstances. And now we're gearing up for July intake. The last one for foundation is in September. Right? And this is for all the three foundations for engineering, business, and computer science. Um, the, this gives you access to our uh, undergraduate programs in Malaysian campus as well as to the UK campus. So if the students want to join us in foundation and then move to UK for undergraduate, yes, it's possible. But obviously, it won't be a financially sound decision. Why? Because uh, as you can see from the fee structure at the bottom, right, you know, the tuition fee structure for foundation in engineering and computer science is about 29,100 for Malaysian students, about 34,000 for international students. By comparison, the same uh, foundation in UK is about 107,000 ringgit, you know, as per current conversion, currency conversion rate. So it's about four times more expensive, right? Same goes for undergraduate programs, right? So if you join us for foundation and then you move there straight away and in undergraduate you're paying a uk tuition fee which is three to four times more expensive and i mean you know obviously not a financially sound decision entry requirement for foundation programs are five a's for computer science and engineering five a's in um, spm or five a's in o level and some of you i understand are from different uh, markets uh, so you're most welcome to just drop me a line you know uh, an email or something about your uh, environment or your particular board of education's entry requirements but in, in sense of equivalency, this is what we have in terms of entry requirements to foundation programs. 
scholarships are there up to 100%. So based on results, again, when you have the access to the agent for uh, information pack and this file, you'll be able to look at uh, some of those scholarships in more detail. 70% uh, economical, I've already told you, you know, it's um, um, almost one third the cost of studies in UK. Now, moving on. These three, uh, uh, these two foundation programs, they lead you to three engineering and one computer science major. So for mechanical engineering, you're looking at 11 specializations, you know, through mechanical engineering pathway. Now, something that I should mention before moving forward, uh, engineering programs are the only programs that students can take two years in Malaysia. In the last two years, they have to be in UK. Have to means they can't complete all four years in UK. And the reason, I'm sorry, uh, they can't complete all four years in Malaysia. And the reason is quite evident here from these couple of slides that see we are, we are offering them 11, uh, 25 specialization from three majors. Um, resources, facilities, I mean, equipment, industrial partners, which are the core strength you know, of our programs, we are not able to offer them in Malaysia. To be very honest, it will be a multi million you know if not billion uh, pound sort of investment you know you're looking at aeronautics astronautics marine biology and so on uh, the current infrastructure and our partnerships in malaysia it's not ready for those sort of programs i would say it's not equipped so that's why the students have to go to uk for the last two years where it's intensive um, uh, industrial engagements for them you know waiting for them uh, third year project final year project group projects and so on right so for engineering program, once again, all engineering programs, two years in Malaysia, last two years in UK, all other programs, they can be completed all three years in Malaysia or one plus two and two plus one sort of, sorry, uh, one plus two and two plus one sort of arrangements are available for the other programs, right? Uh, so mechanical engineering, 11 specializations, acoustical, aerospace, biomedical, engineering management, mechatronics, sustainable energy systems, advanced materials, automotive, uh, computational engineering and mechanical uh, engineering and naval engineering. Highly ranked program individually as well, as you can see, um, uh, I mean, uh, number four in UK by Times and other ranking. Electrical engineering now offers seven specializations. So you have artificial intelligence, software engineering, mathematics, power systems, uh, digital analog electronics, communication and control, and nanotechnology and phonautics. It's been number one. Uh, it's been top three, I would say, for over a decade now. You know, it hasn't dropped below that. Mostly it has been number one in UK, you know, for electrical and electronics and the relevant specializations. So again, huge. Now, um, I'll, I'll let you see the fee structure, you know, for this 40% of the cost saving in the last slide after covering all engineering programs, right? So entry requirements for engineering programs are triple A's, so is for the computer science as well, triple A in um, uh, A level. And then relevant, I can explain to you later. Um, we do offer certain flexibility, you know, A, A, B is manageable. You know, uh, they may look at the, uh, the O level results, for example, or the previous results for some confidence building. But A, A, B has been um, manageable with the academics. We can, the recruitment team obviously can give input to gather approved. So don't say no to those students. Throw those application or inquiries at us. Let us do our bit to get those approved. Um, same goes for now for aeronautics and astronautics. So you're looking at seven specializations, aerodynamics, air vehicle system designs, engineering management, spacecraft engineering, aeronautics and astronautics, the conventional, computational engineering and materials and structures. Okay, so number seven in UK, you know, um, saving up to about 65% to 70% of the overall cost. Business computer science, uh, sorry, bachelor's in computer science, Again, it's number rank number uh, rank number eleven in UK. About they say out of about two hundred plus institutions offering this program, so that's pretty huge. Uh, again, the entry requirements and uh, the uh, detail are same. Let me show you the fee structure and scholarship guidelines for engineering and computer science program. So you're looking at, like I said, it's two years in Malaysia and the last two years are in UK, right? So when you spend two years in Malaysia, the first year in Malaysia uh, is fifty one thousand seven hundred ringgit. For international students, it's close to 60,059,950. The second year is the same, 51,700 for Malaysians and 59,950 for uh, international students. Now, one year in UK directly, you know, when you go there, it's 125,000 ringgit. You know, if let's say if you're directly joining our UK campus, it's about 125,000 ringgit for one year, which means for four years, in UK, you are paying about 500,000 ringgit minimum for your academic, uh, I mean, studies only, right? Now, when you compare that with Malaysia, 
So first year is 51,700, let's say for Malaysian students, second year is 51,700. When you are moving to UK in year three and year four, you are not paying the UK tuition fee 125K ringgit, you know, from third or fourth year. You are entitled for a 20% bursary, you know, when you move to UK. So that's why you pay 100,000 ringgit for year three and 100,000 uh, ringgit for year four. So again, by comparison, Four years in Malay UK cost you uh, sorry, 500,000 ringgit. By comparison, uh, two years in Malaysia cost you about, uh, let's say for international students, it costs you about 120,000 ringgit for 60, 60K and 200,000 for uh, the last two years in UK. The total comes down to about 320,000 for international students and 300,000 for Malaysian students. So that's where that 40% um, uh, uh, economical option is created. You know, as you can see, it saves you about 40% of your tuition for the same degree and eventually completing or graduating in UK campus, right? Um, now, for computer science, one year in Malaysia is 40,900 and the same uh, one year in Malaysia, UK is 125,000 ringgit. So if you're completing all three years in Malaysia, the whole degree goes down to, let's say about close to about 125,000 ringgit maximum. Uh, for international students, about 130,000 ringgit plus. But uh, by comparison, the same thing in UK is going to cost you close to 375,000 ringgit. Again, the transfer options are there. Uh, only difference is for the other programs and in engineering, that when you study two years in Malaysia in engineering and then go to UK, you're offered that 20% transition bursary. It doesn't happen for other programs because you can complete those programs in Malaysia. So for all the other programs, as long as you're with us, you're paying Malaysian tuition fee. The moment you decide to move to UK, you start paying the UK tuition fee, right? And that's that. That's the only thing to to be to to be uh, kept in mind and to be made known to the students. Um, entry requirements in the summary again, you know, my triple A scholarships of um, up to hundred percent are available. We have additional education grants which we occasionally announce. Those are on top of the. Um, and scholarships you know so it's good to follow our social pages for example newsletter and all this because we are always announcing some uh, additional education grants you know for other programs uh, uh, and different intakes as well but the scholarships are 100 percent guaranteed there's no application form no additional protocol as long as the student is eligible for the scholarship the system will pick it up you know when we keen the results and they will know otherwise you are most welcome to remind us and it's uh, automatically offered to the students based on academic results now, moving to business portfolio. Uh, so we have business foundation, again, three intakes leading to the six, uh, five uh, undergraduate programs. Uh, the sixth one is being under process. It's uh, just sort of regulatory procedures going on. So probably by May, I should be able to tell you that uh, business foundation leads to all six our undergraduate programs, right? Um, five Bs, relatively slightly more, um, I would say easier to get into a business foundation with us. We're looking at five Bs, you know, with a B in mathematics, you know, for entry into business foundation leading to all those programs. The tuition fee structure or is also lesser. It's about 22,000 for Malaysian students, 25,000 for international students, and the scholarships are available up to 100% for that. Um, okay, uh, Chris, I, I, I hope I just answered this. Uh, Okay, Chris, I, I just, I hope I just answered this question about the fee structure comparison, right? You know, so I'll move on, but again, if it's not clear, we'll cover that at the end of the slide once again. Um, so this is the business foundation leading to um, six, uh, five uh, business majors at the moment, but six, one economics and actuarial science is under the, the completion. It's just an internal process, you know? Uh, so we, it will lead to eventually to these six uh, special uh, majors. Business management, you have business accounting and finance, entrepreneurship, you have uh, analytics, you've got marketing and you have economics and actuarial science. Now, individually, these programs are also top ranked under 10, most of them and so on. Um, exemptions, accreditations, affiliations for all of these with related bodies and all these are all in place, right? So, I mean, that's something that we can um, rely on our UK approvals and all this because it's, it's the same program. Now, um, in a glance, you're looking at 38,500 ringgit for business programs in Malaysia. 
and you are looking at 100 and about over 100,000 ringgit, you know, for the same year in UK. So again, three years in UK, my uh, three years in Malaysia are going to cost you about close to about 120,000 uh, ringgit, everything inclusive, right? And the same in my UK is going to cost you about 300 uh, plus thousand ringgit. So another about 60%, you know, um, uh, uh, factor is there, more economical if you study and complete your studies in Malaysia. But again, if you want to spend one year with us, two years in UK, two years with us in one year in UK, I mean, those options are available to the students and uh, so on. Uh, moving on, some of the graduates, um, please know that we have a small short history of uh, presence in Malaysia. Obviously, we started back in 2013. 2014 was our first class for undergraduate studies. They graduated somewhere in 2017. So obviously, you know, we've got a small cohorts in the past, um, uh, a small history in, from Malaysian graduates at least, but they have landed jobs at very impressive brands. So you're looking at Rolls Royce, you're looking at Intel, Dyson, Penta, uh, um, Panasonic and so on, you know, and obviously a lot of Malaysian institution brands, a lot of UK brands who stayed back and all. So you have the confidence that the, in terms of quality of education, in terms of the experience, nothing is compromised, you know, by campus location. Uh, some of the partners, this list can never be complete. This, I, if I have to go through the names, you know, it's going to take me like for, for, I mean, hours, if not um, days. So we've got thousands of partners where students have access to for their industrial projects, for their group assignments, for their other uh, industrial in Ports, right um, so uh, this is what they utilize and the same thing is now being replicated in Malaysia as well because we launched the three plus zero options for the students they can complete studies here so now working group is working on having these and many other partner companies from Malaysia Singapore to be on the board to provide the same access to the students you know for industrial experience and exposure uh, some of the testimonials, I'm sure every university has those. So I'll just let you have a quick look at it. You know, a very student, a happy student and parents uh, body, I would say. And this is not at all I'm saying because I'm at Southampton. I'm coming from a couple of uh, different experiences in past 12 years. Um, the sort of satisfaction, the sort of trust, you know, that you find in the parents and students on campus is, is remarkable. I'm, I'm, I'm impressed. You know, whenever you talk to them, a very happy, very excited students and parents body, I would say. So this these are some of those uh, reflections. Now, um, preparedness, I know some of you are international uh, partners, you know, looking at Malaysia, is it safe to send, how is it happening and all this. We have taken pride in all the measures that we put, you know, due to this COVID uh, uh, issue, right? Uh, obviously, the first day when the government announced last year, we went all online. After that, whenever the government offered flexibility, we offered hybrid uh, option to the students. They could be on campus, they could be online, their choices. And same is happening, you know, currently as well. So uh, we were the first one to, I would say, I'm like one of the first one to react to those uh, engineering. Last year, we were, had only engineering programs. So even the faculty went to the lens that they sent some of the lab equipment by courier to the students. That, okay, you are in Penang, you are in Kuala Lumpur, you are in JB. Take this equipment, take these multiple equipments, run, have the practical, you know, uh, safety, obviously priority at your end. And then we will take those back and then transfer to some of the other students. So this is the sort of I mean, engagement we, we um, ensured. And obviously with the experience and the time, you know, we have, we have just improved. So we've gotten some new access to it, the, the soft line, uh, I mean, online tools and platforms where they can experience more, you know, if they're not able on, to be in, on the campus. And some of the better resources have been offered to them because of this whole uh, online situation. So we are prepared for it. Not a problem. Not a single dropout out because of COVID or uh, affected studies reason, you know, uh, in all this time with us. This is something that uh, I mean, really proud of. Um, some of the facilities on campus in the vicinity, edu city. So in terms of labs, sports activities, lifestyle, you know, it's impressive. I mean, Olympic size swimming pool, a football field, you know, with the stadium, track activities, indoor gyms, outdoor gyms, you know, uh, basketball, uh, um, badminton courts and so on. Uh, extracurricular activities are huge and again the whole edu city premises you know because you are in the environment it offers you if you're living in an urban city Kuala Lumpur, Cyberjai, Penang and all you know you've got a lot of other distractions which are good you know at times but they may not be offering you some uh, extracurricular engagement or uh, supplementing or you know, complementing your um, uh, academic experience but this one gives you a whole healthy a very interactive and engaging sort of uh, lifestyle so 
accommodation options uh, i'm keeping a bit brief i am wary of the time as well so accommodation option we have two accommodation options one will be within edu city you know where we are what should have access to currently which we call edu city village so they can stay here from the new campus it will be about five minutes walk and then the other option will be eco nest um, uh, uh, the one the two towers that i showed you earlier that will be about two minutes to three minutes walk you just go downstairs cross the street you know, and you're on the new campus so accommodation options are there for the students uh, in terms of facility extracurricular activities as i mentioned you've got a number of clubs um, uh, sports clubs uh, activities clubs cultural clubs societies and so on so students are able to engage in all of those um, during their stay with us and on edu city again very brief look at some of the facilities you watch those in the uh, video anyway so i'll uh, skip this um, and some of the labs and the classroom lookout it's ready by june mid june we'll have the keys we are taking another month you know up to mid july to sort of transfer the things get everything installed and set up and all this clear cleaning it and we are expecting by first of august we should be able to welcome the students you know on the new campus so exciting times it's five times bigger facility very impressive beautiful the whole uh, area and all um, we are also working on a wind tunnel you know hopefully in 2023 20, uh, that we will be the first private institution in malaysia to have a wind tunnel of its own you know so even some of the public universities some of the it, it's not there but again it's a plan so i'll only be able to announce it once something is finalized but that that's a sort of level of investment and commitment that we are working on right now for the students so uh, Hello. Okay. Uh, okay, I'll skip that one because of the time. I'm gonna. Uh, so for those of you, you know, when you're uh, some information about when you're registering a student, for example, online. So we've got multiple. Uh, I mean, before this, we were embedded in the UK Malaysia website, right? So uh, now we have our own Malaysian website. So always go to Malaysian website, which is Southampton dot Malaysia. No, sorry, Southampton Malaysia dot edu dot my because it has immediate updates, it has more relevant information for Malaysian campus. The one that's embedded in UK campus that has a general information, but may not have the regular updates and features, you know, there on, on, on an immediate basis. That's one. Second, as a recruitment partner, um, uh, I'll share the link with you. Bo will share the link with you for registration. You will have, uh, so this is the link. Uh, again, um, when you go there for uh, application submissions, uh, you or the student can fill those applications not a problem at all you just have to key in some uh, of your company details so the student is registered under your records so when you look at the second screenshot when you click on this that yes i am an uh, an agent applying for the student or the student can also click that option this is what you ask so there's a drop down list where you will eventually see the uh, yes education's name there you select your uh, name and that's it and um, under that you can put your uh, bo or johnny or mike or anybody they can put you know your email address there to say that this is coming from yes education but the counselor is a or b or c so we know who to communicate with right and then your email address so that's you can always share this with the student they can fill on your behalf as long as you guide them how to fill this first section and that's it after that the form is quite general so this is something that i usually like to highlight to the uh, partners in terms of securing the application under your names right and then uh, we are all good to go some of the payment options again when i'll send the file to you you can see what are the payment options for upfront uh, the deposit or anything at all and then uh, yes uh, online credit card bank transfer all those options are there and then some of the our channels you subscribe to those you know just to stay updated with what's happening at our um, uh, pages I mean, our, our campus some announcements and all this that's all i mean i know i've rushed some of the last bits i've rushed but i'm aware i wanted to have a chit chat with all of you so if you get any question please let me know and i will address those and uh it will make yeah it'll make a lot easier you know, to give you more info relative information any questions please so far if i missed anything am i my apologies but please if you got anything uh, you want me to cover i'll be more than happy to cover that as well please thank you umar thank you so much for your uh, presentation today very very clear and uh, what what a what a fantastic university um University of Southampton in Malaysia. It's absolutely fantastic. Um, so we'll uh, open up the floor to, to questions now.
So yeah. any questions about um, requirements or life on campus um, or life in Malaysia? What, what, what do you think, um, Umar, yourself, um, for international students that come to, to Malaysia? Um, I mean, you talked a little bit about some of the companies uh, that uh, students can work for upon, upon graduation. Um, yeah, what, 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 maybe you can touch on a little bit about uh, some of the, the student life and uh, some of the opportunities that they have uh, to look for some of these jobs, perhaps uh, internships or, or exposure to these type of companies if they study at University of Southampton. Okay. okay. Um, I mean, uh, Bo, I mean, I, I understand you being a, a foreigner as well in Southeast Asia and yeah. I being, you know, one in, in uh, Malaysia myself, you know, I think we are in the best position to sort of uh, uh, comment on that and give some confidence, you know, you know, so I came to Malaysia 18 years ago, had my studies and then um, I started working, you know, so I mean, the opportunities are there a lot of, I would say, uh, despite, despite, I would say some negative um, comments and observations by some that, you know, it's, it's probably, uh, uh, I mean, it's, it's not conducive, it's not a, a helpful environment. I beg to differ every time, you know, mm. um, it's not at all like this. You see, every environment has a right to protect its own, uh, I mean, your yep. stakeholders first, you know, and, and obviously every government takes certain measures, but two things, you know, and I'm a firm believer of those things. I've got hundreds of examples around me that first of all, if you're qualified, you know, you know, uh, and you have the commitment. I mean, uh, if you have a CGPA of 2, 2.2, you know, trust me, uh, I mean, uh, at least my father would not give me the job, you know, as well with his company. You know, he'd rather yeah. leave me at home and he say, I'll give you pocket money, right? You know, but you don't join my company because, I mean, you're not good enough, you know? So, and that, that that's a very fair, I mean, employers are vicious these days. Employers are, you know, I mean, um, uh, they have to be because it's so competitive. So when it comes to your qualifications, as long as you have decent results in Malaysia, I would say, you know, anything three, three plus something, you are always observed or, you know, noticed by employers, you know, regardless of being a local or an international student. So you have a very equal shot, I would say, or a very fair shot at opportunities, even if you are international, right? You know, but again, like I said, the qualifications or your results should support that. Now, Second is commitment. Um, you just can't, uh, I mean, uh, be not committed when it comes to your industrial placements during your studies. For example, you've got internship opportunities. You know, most of the universities in Malaysia, they have now internship embedded, you know, in their uh, studies, right? Um, for us, yes, it is not compulsory, but because of the industrial demand that we receive, you know, we receive a, a lot of requests from the partner companies that, okay, we've got five internships, we've got six, why don't you send our your students to us? So we are lucky in that position, but again, you know, some students, if they say, ah, this is the break time, I don't have to take internship, I can take next year, or I, I can work, and, and, and they don't commit themselves to that sort of experience, you know, obviously, you know, you're putting yourself on a back foot, right? So that's where the commitment comes in, right? But yep. if somebody has decent qualifications and somebody has worked or somebody has shown that commitment through projects, assignment, research, thesis writing, and eventually your internship, I, I would say the Malaysia overall, you know, it, 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 it offers a bright, uh, you know, like picture to the students, both domestic and obviously especially for international students. Um, now, um, in terms of uh, companies approaches, yes, um, we are again in a, in a lucky situation that we are in Johor. So we don't have a lot of competition, I would say, around, you know, for um, um, uh, students heading out to companies for internships. If you look at Kuala Lumpur, if you look at Penang, for example, you know, and all, right, Cyberjaya, for example, those have, I mean, like hundreds of institutions, you know, jam-packed in a very small geographical area. And those students, when they have to go for internships, obviously, you know, the companies are, are not enough and they struggle, you know, finding internships. Now, for us, I mean, for engineering, we were the top brand here, a couple of other institutions, you know, public and so on, but we had the whole Johor and up to uh, center of um, I would say Malaysia and even Singapore for that sort of opportunity, right? 
Yeah. Our students have been blessed. Our students have been lucky that they have been able to, uh, I mean, access inter industrial placements. They've been able to get it. And now, obviously, with the working group uh, created, you know, we are approaching some of our UK partners that have uh, branch campuses, branch offices in this region. So we want to continue. We're looking at local partner companies. So again, we are quite confident that we will be able to give them uh, a decent platforms, you know, to utilize that, uh, I mean, to, to go through internship and industrial placements. And uh, I mean, to me, uh, to be very honest, the companies so far have been quite welcoming. They've been very encouraging, you know, to, to look for. The Southeast Asian partners, they have a huge, you know, stake as well. You know, they are also looking at outbound markets, you know. So let's say if you are a Middle Eastern student, you are a Central Asian student, you know, for example, you're even Japanese Korean student with a language advantage and some, uh, um, uh, some local understanding, domestic understanding of your region, right? The employers here are always looking at you because you become the connection, you know, you become the, 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 the intelligence for them, you know. So those yeah. still, I mean, again, it's about packaging yourself. So if you sort of approach them with this uh, point of view that this is who I am, these are my network, this is my understanding of my markets and all, and this is why you need me. I mean, companies and environments usually have a very positive uh, output, I would say. So yeah, that's it. I mean, there, there was a bit of speculation that, oh, Malaysian government has induced guidelines. You can't get a job below 3,000. You can't get a job below 5,000 salary and so on. But to me, honest, those have not impacted the professional environments. I mean, obviously, if you are uh, if you're studying business administration general and you want to yeah. apply for a sales job and all this, they would give preference to somebody local who has language advantage, who has, you know, geographical reach, outreach advantage and all. But if you're looking at um, entrepreneurship, if you're looking at marketing, digital marketing, if you're looking at accounting and finance, if you're looking at actuarial sciences, you know, if you're looking at computer sciences, programming or engineering, those are still specialized fields and people don't usually restrict, you know, their options of, you know, I mean, hiring people because of, uh, I mean, nationality, to be honest. So still, I would say a positive, positive outlook so far. Sorry, a long answer, but I thought I'll no, just- No, that's good. Very it covers it all yeah. very well. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. great. That's great. Okay, yeah. I see we have some questions here uh, in in the box. Please. So um, one question is, what is the country breakdown uh, where students come from that study at uh, University of Southampton, Malaysia? What percentage of from say Singapore, Vietnam, etc. If you know this information. Okay, so I mean, then for that, I can boast, you know, that yes, probably that's why I've been hired or that's why I was, uh, uh, I mean, given this opportunity to work with Southampton. You see, all this while, Malaysian campus, you know, the past first, first seven years or so, it was Malaysian campus, you know, so there was, a, there was not a lot of efforts, investments, engagements in international markets, you yeah. know. Um, I know a lot of um, partners here, I'm like, you know, the team members here probably might, must have heard about Southampton Malaysia, but they never got a very encouraging approach or they were not given encouraging responses because, I mean, in terms of uh, resources, finances, human resources, everything, we were not looking at um, international markets actively. Yes, we had uh, students from Singapore, we had students from Brunei, Indonesia, but those were who were happy to join us through just one education fair or through another agent's efforts and that's it, right? But now, yes, so I mean, so if you talk about till last year, I would say probably international population on the campus was um, less than 5%, you know, yeah. uh, mostly uh, Chinese, Singaporeans and uh, Indonesian and Brunei sort of mix. One yep. or two odd every year from Middle East and Indonesia, uh, India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, right? But now, uh, this year, we are looking at uh, about 12% international students, you know, uh, and then by next year, my target is to take it to 20% international students. Mm. Um, in terms of figures, if I have to put it, for example, again, please understand that all this while we had students from one foundation and two undergraduate years, you know, uh, of engineering because then they had to move to UK. So we never had students from third year of engineering on our campus. So the, the population was small anyway. Now you've added nine new program, eight new programs, uh, sorry, nine new programs. So obviously 
that population has. So from new intake, I would say of 2021, out of about a target of about 400, we are looking at about 60 international students. Next year, double the amount, and we're looking at almost about 150 international students, you know, out of those, right? So the reason now, because yes, we, we, have, we have secured more uh, resources in terms of the team. Uh, when I joined, there was only two staff team members, and that's it, you know, in the whole team plus ahead. But now yep. I'm the recruitment manager. I've got a team member, six team members. I'm hiring three more, you know, as we speak right now. And that's what gives confidence that in terms of human resources, in terms of financial resources, infrastructure, yes, we are looking at international markets very actively. So China is one of them. Vietnam is one of them. We've got uh, uh, Brunei, Indonesia, Singapore. Singapore. You know, those, yeah, they're uh, the main uh, number where the students exactly, are. Exactly, yeah. exactly, exactly, exactly. Right? Exactly. Uh, Pakistan, uh, India, Bangladesh, Middle East, UAE, and uh, so on, they are there. And then yep. I'm looking at probably by 2023 to, to see if we can explore a bit of uh, Central Asia as well, you know, uh, yep. this certain trust. So uh, I hope I hope that's, uh, that addresses the, the question that in terms yep. of breakdown, it's been quite small or here and there. But yes, you are confident that and we are we are welcoming proposals now. We are welcoming partners now, like, you know, in, from international markets proactively, actively, right? So, I mean, that, that should be a good sign for this year. Uh, Joey asks, is there a quota on the number of students who can transfer to the UK campus uh, after after year one, so year two, year three of the business. Yeah. So Joey, Joey might have Joey might have uh, read uh, an aesthetic and a small note there that says depending upon the availability of the seats in UK. Yeah. You know, uh, but then to be honest, we have not discussed any quota. It has never come up. It was just an idea that oh, you know, if uh, Southampton, Malaysia starts sending two hundred students in business marketing, you know, what how are you going to manage that? So they said yes, let's keep uh, a sort of a quota uh, a, a side note on that but um i don't see that thing you know at me happening in next um five or six years at least you know i'm like you know right yes the day we have 100 to 150 marketing students only every year then i can say that probably they would like to discuss something on those lines you know you see put it this way uh bo that I mean, there were already hundreds of Malaysian students going to UK for various programs, right? And there's no quota on any international recruitment by anyone. But now because we are based here and then yet last time, probably 10 marketing students were going to directly to UK. Now, uh, this year, my seats, I've got uh, 15, uh, seat, 12 seats only for marketing programs, small cohort, right? Next year, we may double it to about 24 and then so on. So in next five or six years time, if I am having 100 uh, new marketing students, Yes, that sort of thing may come up, but right now there's no quota, there's no limitation to say yeah. as such on any sort of transfer. I mean, uh, be easy. The day we decide, I'm sure we're going to inform the partners a lot in advance, so they should start knowing that, that what's going to happen in the next three years at Malaysian mm -hmm. campus and transfers. I don't see that being an issue for the next five to seven years, I would say. Yes. Right. I would want to have that issue tomorrow that I have 200 marketing students and I can't send them to UK or they say, hold on enough, but you know, it's not going to happen for at least five to seven years. No, no discussion on those and lines. Do you need to have a certain GPA to be able to transfer no. to the UK? No. no. Again, no, because it's, it's, it's a campus transfer. It's like I'm sitting in this room right now, this building, and then I'm moving to that building across. That's great. And Good that's to know. You know. So no extra entry. And that's why a lot of you will observe that our entry requirements are significantly high you know than malaysian institutions or other institutions are in in the region because there was a hundred percent aligned with uk uh, the guidelines right yeah so uh, when you join us when you are in you are in then it's just a matter of campus transfer and that's it yeah it, to give you an idea you see exam happening at 10 o'clock in uk 10 a.m in the morning the same exam the same paper starts you know at 6 p.m in malaysia in the evening so you know so that we don't even have different papers timings this is how synchronized we are with uk campus you know for example mm. yeah fantastic yeah. great uh next question is um how many years uh, has university of southampton malaysia been in operation all right, so if you talk about Malaysian campus, yeah, it's been, I would say this is our eighth year in Malaysia. We started, we, we came here in Edu City in 2013. 
Uh, 2012, actually, the, the website says 2012, but 2013, we launched our operations. Uh, 2013, we had only foundation program. 2014, we started our undergraduate studies. And so uh, it's been about eight years in service in Malaysia. If you talk about UK, it's uh, one, almost 150 years plus history now, yeah. And we have a couple more questions here. Um, the internships, are they, are they paid? Yep, yep. Those are paid. Those are paid internships. Uh, those are, uh, we don't have any influence on what is paid because those are by HR policies of the partner companies or, and which are in line with the labor policies and so on. So you, you obviously you can't get certain, I mean, below certain um, guidelines, but yeah, we don't have any influence, but those are paid internships. Most of the partners, I would say they pay. Some of them, um, I, I shouldn't call them stingy or miser, but yeah, some of them, they say, oh, internship is there, but sometimes there are the opportunity is so good and that students are okay to sort of you know invest a little bit of their own if they they, they want to but 99 percent of these they follow their hr policies and labor policies so those are paid internships yes great and uh then we have another question um what is the estimated student capacity of the new campus Oh, good question. So we are looking at 2,200 uh, students on campus by 2025 plus, you know, 2026. Uh, the campus capacity is 2,002, yes. Great. Yeah. And then on top of that as well, we've got some uh, of the future plans in like, you know, which we have not sort of uh, put any, any, any uh, label or any, uh, I mean, title to it. So we have a, pot a potential to grow, I mean, uh, to expand it as well. But right now we are working on 2,200 capacity uh, facilities. Yes. Fantastic. And I have a question of, about uh, the English program uh, at Southampton. So um, how how much is the English program per week or, so per, is, or let's say if a student yeah, doesn't meet the English requirement, how, how long do, does a student normally have to do and how, how much is it? Okay, so now this is the something that is missing again from our portfolio, yep. I would say so far, but like I said, it was all Malaysia campus, so some of those coming abroad, they will simply take IELTS, but realizing that now we are looking at China, I mean, Southeast Asia overall, Middle East market where the English yep. is, is a concern. So yeah, we don't have the English program option on the campus at the moment. Uh, we received some really interesting proposals from some of the local uh, service providers, you know, and we are working with some of those to sort of have a partnership where the students can still join um, them and us and then take the English locally and then transfer to our campus. Uh, those details are being discussed, to be very honest, quite in preliminary stage. So uh, it may take probably a third quarter of this year, you know, to sort of conclude on those. So at the moment, uh, we don't have English option on campus. So students have to take IELTS uh, or TOEFL abroad. Other than that, we have option like uh, O level, for example, if we have a minimum uh, C in as a first language or a B as a second language, you know, you can you don't require an IELTS or TOEFL. Uh, SPM, similarly, they have got some, some option and some of the other uh, options are there. So that again, I can um, share the details by board by board. Uh, so they necessarily don't have to take IELTS or TOEFL. They've got some other, uh, I mean, uh, ways as well. But otherwise, at, at the moment, no language option on campus with us. Yeah. Fantastic. Okay. Any more questions here? Uh, is it is it possible for students who complete their foundation program in the UK? and then transfer to Malaysia campus for the bachelor program. Sorry, say again, uh, uh, Bo, sorry. Is it, it, oh, that's okay. Uh, is it possible for students to do their foundation in the UK and then transfer to Malaysia campus for bachelor program? Oh, yes, good question. You know, that actually, actually popped up. And again, uh, we didn't we didn't see any reason not to entertain that or anything at all, because again, it's just a campus transfer. So this has actually come up to us in the in, in the past. I recall a few years ago before I had joined Southampton, uh, I was told that there was a case a family was moving from UK to Malaysia. And that's that's how they wanted to to mm. show that. So, so yeah, that has actually come up. That has been um, done. Uh, only thing that yeah, they have to go through Malaysian, uh, what do you call them, the visa policy proper yeah. procedure. But otherwise, yes, not not uh, uh, not, not, not problem. Yeah, yeah. Great. Okay, um, we've gone over time, so I think we'll end this webinar here. And thank you so much, uh, Umar, for your fantastic presentation and sticking around for the questions. Really appreciate your time.
and uh, I will provide everyone with the, the presentation for today. Um, and if you have any more questions, be sure to get in touch with me. I'll be more than happy to help. Um, and we really want to, uh, of course, support uh, University of Southampton, such a fantastic university, very highly ranked as well. And uh, I think we'll become a very top uh, destination for international students. And looking at the new campus, it looks absolutely fantastic too. So thank you again, uh, Umar. My pleasure, uh, everyone. Thank you so much for arranging it. I mean, interacting, answering all those questions. Always a pleasure, you know. And then again, through Bo, Johnny, and Wayne. I mean, if you've got ideas, if you've got proposals, you've got suggestions, you know, for your respective markets, please put those forward. We'll be actively looking at those. Uh, been a pleasure talking to all of you. Stay safe. Most importantly, please preach it, practice it, and then uh, looking forward to have you physically on campus uh, in near future. Yeah. Oh, just one more question by Chris is, is University of Southampton Malaysia wholly owned by the UK uh, or is it a branch or franchise? No, nah, it's wholly owned by UK. Yeah, so we, we, we have not gotten uh, gone in that direction. A hundred percent owned and operated yeah. by, by UK board, yes. Yeah, fantastic. All right. Thank you, Omar, and have a good day. Stay safe, everybody. Bye-bye. Stay Thank safe. Bye-bye.